If you guys just joined on to see what we're doing with landing a plane on this building, there's a whole series of videos of how we did the modification to put nitrous and a tail strike bumper on the back of the plane if it smacked the side of the helipad on top of this building. Um, the horsepower, the lightning of the weight, the relocating of CG, all the work we had to do to make this possible. This isn't a standard airplane. This is a little beast. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Last we left off, the plane flew out of here, Spanish Fork, to go to Arizona. We had flown off all of its required phase flight. We had to take it back into a safety phase for flying off the hours because of so many modifications were done to this carbon cup to create the Little Beast Red Bull plane. And it left here, which is nerve wracking enough because whenever I build an airplane, I'm always the guy who flies it, tests it, tries it out, and then puts the big bunch of hours behind it. This time it was different. Um, great pilot, Luke, the Red Bull aerobatic competitive pilot who raced the Red Bull air races, which is just awesome. I followed his racing and even watched him race in Southern California. Um, great, great guy. So I had a lot of confidence, but it wasn't me that flew away. And uh, they went to Arizona to put a bunch more hours and do some flight testing at near the same elevation as this hotel we're gonna try and land on. And it went perfect. And they had no problems. They had a uh, little adjustment to make on the tension of the tailwheel, which is just common personal preference and get it dialed so it doesn't wiggle as much on certain kind of impacts or touchdowns. But that's it. I mean, that's <laughs> as good as it gets. A common adjustment item. Um, and then the plane got flown from Arizona after a perfect series of test flights up to Washington to Cup Crafters to do <laughs> something nuts. We have such a small window to make this happen. They need to tear the whole plane apart, put it in a crate, custom made, including pulling the engine, all the fluids, emptying the tanks, the nitrous, completely disassembling the wings from the aircraft, putting it in a little box, and then next day air freighted an entire airplane inside a 747. And I was scared to death about how that would go, but I did get word that it made it to Dubai, no damage. I, I can't get a box to make it to my house without getting wrecked. So I don't know how we got an air freight in an airplane to Dubai next day air and it didn't get wrecked at all. Nothing happened to it. So one down, one to go. Today we're gonna find out the most important part. Can we do three takeoffs, three landings in a row with everyone there watching, no matter what the wind conditions are on the day they need to have the CAA there, it's the equivalent of like the FAA, while they have the top dignitaries that have to give a blessing to it and the hotel representatives there to make sure that they feel like this plane can actually land on a helipad on the side of the ocean on the side of a building 600 feet in the air in a 78 foot circle and i'm waiting to hear from brad if they missed any of the three and it's not get 20 tries and get three in a row. It's the first one, second one, third one, no exceptions. Takeoff and landing have to hit perfectly. And if that doesn't happen, the wind doesn't work right, this event's off. So let's give Brad a call and hear the news. I know they're done, but uh, I'm dying to get an update. So let's give him a call. All right, I've got Brad here. Let me kick it on speaker here. All right, Brad, I am on pins and needles 
dying to know how things went. Did everybody make it there? And how did the flight demonstration go for these guys? Uh, Mike, everything went extremely well. Um, yeah, everybody made it here. The airplane made it here okay. Um, the advanced team uh, put the airplane back together. We flight tested the airplane. I was happy with the flight tests. Luke was happy with the flight tests. Um, the airplane performed perfectly. Wait, okay. Hold, hold on. Okay, I'm like, I'm on cloud nine, seventh heaven. This is awesome news. But like, get me up to speed. Um, last I heard that it did get, the plane got assembled. It was flying great. It sounds like you've already got it out to the site. What site did you end up picking to do the demonstration? Was it grass? Was it asphalt? Like, what, where did you paint the circle and, and, and who made it there for all that? Yeah, so the, uh, the flight tests, we did that at a little airport called Narashiba. It's a private airport in Dubai. And uh, it's got asphalt and it's got astroturf, interestingly enough. And so um, winds weren't really all that favorable. We were dealing with a crosswind, but we made it work. And uh, we painted out the exact dimensions of the heliport, uh, both the landing area and the overrun safety area. How and we and just it, nailed it. <laughs> awesome. We painted lines on the ground at two different rings and different dimensions. I know the heliport is smaller. The actual landing spot is smaller than the safety margin, which is essentially don't go here, but a little buffer. What are the dimensions of the actual landing spot and our overrun cautionary backup that's really not for us to be on? So the, the overall dimensions that we've got to work with, um, including the safety margin area, is 91 feet 10 inches. The actual landing area um, is about 78 feet, if I recall correctly. I don't know that number off the top of my head. <laughs> but we painted both of those both of those circles on the ground. And remember, this is 600 and this is over 650 feet above ground level. Um, on the side of a building. And um, mentally, it's a lot tougher challenge. Anyway, uh, Luke, uh, the Red Bull pilot, um, he absolutely nailed it. Uh, all three takeoffs, um, all three landings. Um, takeoffs were averaging 45 to 55 feet. Um, landings were all within, the, uh, all within the heliport landing area itself. Uh, with extra margin, and then we also demonstrated how capable the airplane was of doing a go around. If uh, if Luke, if the pilot didn't like the approach or if things weren't uh, going well, you know it's a carbon cup, so you shove the throttle forward and it's instantly back in the air, especially with an extra 50 horsepower of, of nitrous boost. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so. Um, I, I haven't been sleeping well at night. I've been up waiting all this work, all this travel. We next day air freighted a plane inside an airplane to pull this off. I'm, I'm just, I'm so relieved to hear all this. Um, there is something that I think a lot of people are going to be really interested to hear. A lot of planes, super extreme competitive bush planes, you can find a video of them landing in a really small space in a really strong wind. It's typically where we find the funnest, most impressive videos in, is a strong wind. We have a problem with this tower. It's got two giant arcing arms that create an unbelievable roller all around the top of that pad um, if the wind's blowing. What is our limitations that we have to fit this in in wind limits? for the authorities to approve it. So for clean approach and a clean departure, um, there's a optical wind of about 060 um, coming from one direction, uh, 240 from the other direction. And we can go and be safe about 20 degrees either side of those two, of those two uh, directions. So we've got some margin there, but we definitely um, need a wind that's paralleling the shoreline and not directly onshore or not directly off the desert. 
Um, yeah, which oftentimes if you're on a beach, you feel the wind coming right at you, which is perpendicular to our optimal. So I'm sure that's constantly changing, but that's a unique target. That is constantly changing, but uh, the, the team crunched a whole, one of the reasons we picked these dates is because the team looked at weather data over the entire year, crunched a lot of data, and when we've got the best chance for favorable winds is this week uh, in March that we're going to be that we're going to be attempting this, and um, so yeah, we've got uh, lower wind limits, we've got upper wind limits, and we've got directional limits uh, to keep it safe for everybody. What's the uh, upper wind limit set? I think that's still being negotiated uh, with the uh, with the CAA. Uh, okay. Um, after the after the demonstration today, we got you know verbal permission that the project is a go ahead, but they are still uh, doing the paperwork to actually issue uh, the formal permit, and all of those limits will be included in the formal permit. And I don't know awesome. exactly where they're going to end up on them. Okay. Well, that's awesome. So, all of you watching this video, this is a huge relief. Um, super exciting and uh, we got a great event coming and now that they've done all the hard work they took the plane apart that we built <laughs> sent it across the pond on an <laughs> air freight of a plane which is just cool and test flew it and we officially have the go-ahead so Brad woohoo! <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, you said that so calmly, and I'm so cotton picking excited. I know you are too, so um, I can't wait to get there. We've, we, we've been here for about a week getting ready for today, you know, receiving the airplane, making sure it got through customs okay. Uh, there's a, been a ton of paperwork. Uh, there's a big production crew here videoing everything, you know, lots of local officials, um, all that sort of stuff. So it's. Uh, it's been a long six days to get to today, but yeah, I'm super excited. Everybody's super excited here. Um, man, if you could have heard it, uh, when Luke was coming in and doing the landings in front of all these dignitaries and the landing is key to this whole, this, this whole attempt coming off successfully. Uh, the first one, uh, people were just kind of jaw dropped and then the <laughs> second one, they were smart. They were, they, they were kind of smiling. And I was watching the airplane, but I was also watching the crowd for the crowd reaction. And he came in and nailed that third landing. And man, people were cheering and fist bumping and, and raising hands up in the air. Uh, so that's the level of excitement it's generating here um, with the local authorities. Um, everybody's, everybody's real pleased with how things are going. Um, Come Crafters, everybody knows we built an awesome airplane. The mods that you did on the airplane really enhanced its capability for this whole thing. And uh, man, we're looking forward to coming back in early March and uh, watching this whole thing come together. Well, I'm, I, I'm coming for that one. There's no way I'm missing that one, so I can't wait. And Brad, tell me, I, have you had a chance to get up on that pad? Yes. Yes. What is that like to be on a little speck on the side of that building? Good grief. I'm dying to get up there. Well, it's, it's pretty incredible because as you're driving up uh, to the hotel, um, you're looking at this building just absolutely towering over, you know, 10 and 15 story apartment buildings surrounding it. I mean, it makes them just, you know, look like little Lego buildings. And then uh, when you go up inside it uh, and take the elevator ride up, it takes forever to get up there. And once you're up there, then you have to transfer to a smaller elevator and go up another 10 or so floors. And then once you're out there, uh, you have to sign a release uh, saying if you fall off the darn thing and kill yourself that uh, the hotel's not liable. Oh my gosh. And then they finally let you go out on it. Um, but the security dudes really don't like you getting near the edge. And, <laughs> I uh, can't imagine. You're standing on this heliport looking down and, you know, looking significantly down on a ton of big, massive hotels that surround it. Uh, but you're looking down at all of them. Um, you know, this is one of the most famous buildings, one of the most iconic buildings in the world. Um, you know, when people think of Dubai, uh, they think of the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. And uh, 
they think of the the Burj Al Arab, which is the hotel that we're going to be doing this landing on, as the only seven star hotel in the world. Um, it's a it's a level of um, you know, the, the architecture, the building, the service, the staff. Um, it's just over the top different than anything I've ever experienced before. <laughs> awesome. All right, Brad, is there any, any complications or anything that I need to be aware of, or are we good to go at this point? No, we're good to go. Um, we will, uh, you know, when I get back to the States, I'll get all the details uh, for when we're headed back over there um, on the event team. Um, just be ready to, uh, you know, ready to support, make any fine-tuned adjustments on the, uh, the systems that you installed on the airplane. And... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll be, uh, we should be good. Awesome. I'll be ready. You know me. All Back right. to work. I'm on it. Let's go. <laughs> Here we come, Dubai. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. Talk to you later. All right. See you, buddy. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. I'm still, I'm going to go celebrate. It's like steak dinner or something. I don't know. Sushi, something. Uh, I can't believe it went perfect. Uh, everything Brad said, I, I couldn't be happier. Everyone's on board. The event's a go. I just need to book my flight to Dubai, which I've never been. So uh, I hope you follow along for that video. When I fly to Dubai, I'm going to share my experience in getting to the hotel and then landing this aircraft on a helipad on the side of the ocean in another country in 78 feet. <laughs> Come back, follow along. We love you guys. Back to work.